Hey guys, my name is Joshua Parfait, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about turbochargers. So, a little history on turbochargers. They were invented in 1905 by a Swiss engineer named Alfred Aguki. He, um, he invented them to create power without having to uh, get a larger engine. They were originally used on German ships, and from what I found, apparently they were able to boost the power output of those engines from 1750 horsepower to 2500 horsepower. So, a little bit about how it works. Um, as you can see here, we have a single cylinder engine and we have a tur uh, turbo at the top connected to it. So, exhaust gases get pushed out of the engine and go into the hot side of the turbo. That spins a turbine in the turbo and the turbine is connected to a compressor at the inlet. So, cold air is sucked in, it's then compressed to a higher pressure and then pumped into the engine. Basically, the way that this makes more power is that the air, the air that goes into the engine has oxygen in it. Oxygen, as we all know, is very flammable. So the more air that you can pack into this cylinder, the more power you're gonna get out of the um, combustion process. So, all right. Now, here are some formulas. As I was saying earlier, the more air that we can pack in, the better it is. This all has to do with density. So there's two ways to increase density in this case. It's either going to be higher pressure or a lower temperature. So the basically the turbo's job is to get a higher pressure into the engine cylinder and therefore giving you more oxygen. A little bit later on, I'm going to talk about how we're working to reduce the temperature to get a higher density. The next equation that's up there is the first law. Basically, that just means that the energy that we get in um, is proportional to the energy that we get out. And then another big equation for a turbo is this um, specific heat equation at the bottom. So the specific heat of oxygen is point of oxygen is 0.922. This basically just is a way to calculate how much energy a um, a kilogram of oxygen can actually store. So the more density we have, the more mass we have, and we can get theoretically more energy out of it. So if I move on, some of the uses for turbochargers, um, obviously we all know that they make an engine more powerful, but one of the cool things that I found out was um, in planes, when they're on the ground, they have less power than when they're at altitude. That's because the air on the ground is more dense than the air at altitude. So a plane on the ground may have a thousand horsepower, but um, when it gets up in the air, it may drop to 800 horsepower. So in order to fix this, instead of turbocharging the engines, we do what's called turbo normalizing the engine. So a single prop plane like this can go ahead, put a turbo on it, and basically balance out that density problem, and then you can get the full thousand horsepower out of the engine. The other um, uses for it obviously are boats, automobiles, anything that has an engine, you can put a turbo on it and get more power out as long as the engine is strong enough to hold that power. Because if you put too much um, pressure into an engine, obviously it'll blow up. So, but the, the great part about turbos is that, spe specifically in boats and automobiles, you only have a certain amount of space that you can put an engine, and if you have, um, if you need more power with not adding much space, you can throw a turbo on there and you get what you need. All right. Now, turbos have been around for a long time and we're always innovating. So some of the ways that we can make them better, like I was saying earlier, is we can get the air that comes out of that turbo cooler. So the way to do that is to put an intercooler between the turbo and the engine. So if I go back to this diagram, that's actually what this piece right here is. So basically it's just a heat exchanger. Um, it takes the air out of the turbo, puts it through that, makes it colder air, and then the density that you get in the piston is higher. So another thing with turbos, one of the downsides to them is what's called turbo lag. Now what happens is you can put a huge turbo on an engine, but you need you need enough power, or you need enough exhaust to get that big turbo moving. 
because if you don't get it moving fast enough, you're not going to create the power that the engine's supposed to get, and you're going to get lag. So this happens in, in um, a lot of cars. You won't have the RPMs that you need, things like that. So a way to, I guess, get over that hump is with what's called a sequential turbo, where we take a small turbo and connect it to a big turbo, and this small turbo takes less exhaust gases to actually get it up to speed, and then the gases, the air that's pumped into this turbo will then jump start the big turbo. That way you don't have to wait for, um, for the big turbo to spool up and then you'll get the power of the big turbo without having to lag. This is taking place in many, in many of the new cars that are coming out. They also have um, twin turbos that will feed uh, at the exact same time. That way you can have two small turbos instead of having to wait for one big turbo to spool up. But that's about it.